Tell me about the river behind this river trip to Wyoming. I do actually. <laughs> I love the river. They were beautiful. Curly. It's really fun. Yeah, they do. But I remember I kind of like that because I was there. The wonderful thing about those rivers is they go up once, then you're up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But we were at 10,000 feet, so it was like. That's what you said. Yeah. 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 Yeah
but it was just like approving the minutes or approving a recommendation to send to the council. Three out of five. Okay, Mark. Okay, Mark. Three out of four. Wait, we don't have Mark. Do you have other Mark? Oh, Mark Hoffman. Hey, do you know is Mark Hoffman expected to join? Yeah, he was. Yeah, Drew is on the agenda. Well, actually, you want to ask Mark about the new members of the board. You said you didn't have enough data. Hopefully, you know something. You don't see Are you going to hit the creation of the I will. I just opened it up and back this now. And it turns out that uh, I'm not able to do edit it. She said we should all be editing the same thing, but I can't edit it. Yeah, she just sent me, oh, well, she sent this at 608 that after your last meeting, to her. There's maybe a version that we can not tell. Anyway, I, I signed it if I edited it. I said, oh, you have to work with it. Work for these words, work for that. What's it called? Okay. Mark did not answer the phone call. So I don't know if you want to wait for him to join or if you want to proceed with Mark's page. There we go. Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Hi, Drew. Hi everyone. Okay, so we were, we were actually looking for Mark. <laughs> <laughs> We're so glad to see you. We are glad to see you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Mark said he wasn't coming tonight. Oh, not. Okay. Mark, um, Hoffman is coming tonight. Yeah. 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 Okay, reports and announcements. Are there any reports or announcements? I think it's very true. I think we have a report from City Council here. Uh, we're sort of in our half recess, obviously, that we canceled one of our July meetings, one of our August meetings. Um, but really, the two big things we're working on one is the biannual budget, and the other is the comprehensive plan. Um, at the moment, the Planning Commission is holding a public hearing on the comp plan, after which they'll be officially referring it to the Council. Also, staff, staff each department has started coming up with their budget requests. So, uh, to the exception of the tree-related, um, we'll, you know, we'll be talking about that on the budget side. Uh, it's not directly true related, but I'm going to make a push. I'm going to see how I haven't seen the level of the budget yet, but one of the recommendations from the climate action committee from the uh, climate action plan is to hire a climate specialist, so basically a grant writer. Um, so I'm going to be pushing to get the city to, to put money, basically to send some money there to start applying for climate related grants. And that could also involve some of our three projects, presumably. I think we could probably pay them. Since the climate action plan is so broad, I think we would take a fairly broad approach towards you know what their purview is. Really, any any grant that connects to any of the climate action plan objectives. So again, I mean, if I don't know if it's in the budget, it will be in the budget or not. But I'll probably maybe if it's not, I'll make a push for it. There. Okay. Do you have any 
speaking of the budget, the uh, municipal code says we're due for this canopy study. I'm not sure how we get that into the budget. It would be a moderate chunk of money, but probably on the order of $25,000. Um, I think we could ask Chief Elizabeth, have you, thanks, was, was Mark the one who create, who creates the community development side of the section of the budget? Yes. Do you know, did he mention the Kathy study at all? Um, I think we talked about it at the prior meetings, uh, but I'm not exactly sure what it said. But I know it has been mentioned. Yeah, uh, it's oh, on his brain. Um, I know we have to put our estimated budget stuff in for our department. Um, that kind of already happened. I don't know if there's any flexibility now. It, but also, I wasn't sure where the funding for that canopy study like comes from. Is it from the CD budget or is it from the like tree budget as well? Because those are kind of two different way, things we'd have to look at depending on where the money is supposed to come from. It's the Section of the municipal code is a usual unfunded mandate that says do it. Uh, doesn't say how to pay for it. Um, Mark Phillips thinks the, the language is ambiguous. It says it should be done every five years starting in 2022. Um, to me, that means you do it in 2022 and every five years afterwards. He thinks it's five years starting, from, thinks it might be five years starting from 2022. That, that makes very little sense. When was the last one done? It was, yeah, well, it was about five years before. Yeah. So, yeah, no, did. I could follow up with Mark Hoffman and ask because I, I haven't seen the department level budgets yet. I think that Lindsay, our finance director, is going to be presenting those to council in a couple of weeks. But I could inquire as to if that's in there and it, should that be coming from the tree fund? Should it be coming from a capital fund? Uh, yeah, it would be good to know. So yeah. that, I think the tree canopy study is really. Valuable. It's, really it's quite explicit. Trevor, can I tell us for doing So, one thing you really tell us for doing our job, you know, are the policies we have in place working to maintain and increase the canopy? The last one told us that they were doing really well increasing the canopy. I'm inclined to think that's still true, <laughs> but uh, yeah. I think we don't, we don't know. So, I'll treat me taking that as last week's Right. You don't know until you actually get data. Yeah. Um, so I think I think it's really a critical thing to do. It's not a preposterous thing to do on the tree fund. I don't, I don't we've always been kind of vague. We discovered the tree fund has quite a bit of money in it. It's like yeah. seventy thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. And the, a lot of what we might normally spend that money on, uh, tree planting, if we're gonna have this huge chunk of trees being planted by uh, Fort Tom Transit by somebody else. Maybe we have less need for the tree fund immediately. I, I need to set a precedent, but, uh, yeah. but this is not the worst time to take money out of the tree fund. It would be nice for the city to cover the cost of this. It would. They cover the cost of the inventory, the tree, right, which is the other mandate. Right. And um, also, the other one, um, we got quite a bit of public comment at our, our last couple of meetings regarding it. Uh, are you the answer to some of these exceptions? There's a property in, in the northwest corner, it's right on the 205th Street where Lion Creek goes through. Um, but that the owners have applied to build a home there using the reasonable use exception, it basically says if it's in a critical area where they wouldn't normally be allowed, if it would, it would prevent them from doing anything on the property. They're allowed to apply for an exception based on that idea that you can't say you're not allowed to do anything. So that is currently going through the community development division. Mark Hoffman made an official recommendation that will be going to the uh, hearing center. But I just wanted to bring to your attention in case you wanted to you know, lead up on what the recommendations are so far. Where is that online? Publicly, maybe? I believe all of that information is, uh, I see through nodding, uh, I believe it's all publicly available. Yeah, and there's a, there was a public comment process for SIPA, the State Environmental Protection Act, that has closed, but there's still general comment period before 
for development needs, his additional recommendations here, et cetera. So casually with power packs, that's pretty close to market. Is it a property? Well, it's a, the creek runs through, makes a bad, bad, bad. The hillside rises roughly above that. So I presume it's that hillside where they want to build. Yes. And officially on the map, it's a critical area because it blind creek runs through it. Um, it's even true it as unmuted. Oh, yeah, that's pretty much what I have to say. It's it's just really abutting the, the stream over there, and there's some concerns about it being potentially priority habitat, but it's definitely a stream buffer, um, and that's been kind of the gist of the comments we've been getting as well um, about it, and so that all should be online. If you have any trouble finding it, I'm happy to link people to where we have the public notice information for that project for the roof. You know, overall, that's pretty much it. It's, it's the calm before the storm for city council because we have the comp plan and the budget coming up. But other than that, it's been very quiet. Did uh, you and Laurie ever set a time with Drew and I might meet the council to fairly briefly to figure out what their priorities are for the uh, uh, exceptional tree protection? Uh, I know that you changed a couple of emails, but I was copied on. Yeah, and I think it kind of fell through after that. Um, I think even if we don't, if we end up not having a formal meeting, I, I, I understand from previous discussions, I understand the general sense of where the council is. So I'm happy to kind of give you the general gist of, because I don't think things have changed. Uh, but yeah, I think with the budget calendar, I think scheduling is going to be fairly tight, so it might just be best to kind of post on what we've heard in previous discussions. Okay. Um, I can talk about that now if you'd like. You're going to fill time in for the, the agenda. Um, it's on the vertical agenda, so yeah. The, the, the gist of it is council would like some recommendations. Uh, I mean, kind of the well, first core area is species. Currently, the exceptional tree code lists seven species explicitly. Are there any of those that are currently included that really shouldn't be? Are there any that are not included that should be added? And then what sort of catch-all? Do we want a catch-all for everything else? Do we want catch-all for native species? Um, so it's sort of like what, what species should be included? Um, and then in terms of diameters, to the extent the data allows it, can you make recommendations? Obviously, you know, we're not going to be able to get to like one per, for most species, one percent granularity, right? But can you make some, you know, like if you set this diameter, it would protect this percent. And if you set that diameter, it would be that percent. You just sort of give some recommendations. We can certainly, we can certainly do that. The question I had though is do we want to set up? Individual diameters for individual species, or just say we want these. We want to save these trees because they're big. It doesn't matter what species they are. A big tree is an important thing. I'm not saying that's what we should say. I'm saying and, that's one option. And from previous conversations, uh, if you're saying like setting a blanket, anything that's over 36, yeah. the feeling was that was not the approach the council wanted because that was a bit too blunt an instrument. And there'd be concerns that, well, how are you choosing like 36 or 39 or 30? And that, you know, and that having a species level determinant. So I think from the council's end, they would like to see some level of species by species. I mean, we, can, we, can, we can do a much more precise uh, or believable, say, precise number for all trees than we can for any individual species. So if we say 36%, I can tell you that'll save about 2.4% of the trees. If I say we set the, the level for big leaf maple at 36 I, degrees, I, I won't know really much. Well, my, I think what the council might want to see is for the trees that we have a lot of, like big leaf maple and some of the other, the most popular trees in the city, for those, set a species specific number. And then for everything else where there just aren't enough of them to make a statistical extrapolation. That would be the catch-all. 
I think that would satisfy the council's desire to have kind of a data driven approach for as many species as possible, but then say for the remainder, we want to protect X percent of that. Oh, well, the related question here we talked about just before is do we want to have this this law rule relatively actively uh, encouraging diversity of species? And if we, because if we set a single limit, um, we'll mostly end up protecting uh, red cedar and hug fur. If we set a higher limit for red cedar and hug fur than for other things, we will be somewhat encouraging the preservation of other species all over. And you know, if, if, I and sound, if I sound coy, I want to make sure I don't want to. I, I don't want to be accidentally influencing you because I want the tree board to come to recommendations. But I can see you offering both of those options. Like option A would be let's set a number and protect the biggest trees. And then option B would be let's set as many species specific numbers. And there's pros and cons to both approaches. I think, you know, if the tree board wants to present both options and then also say which of those two options you prefer, I think that would be good for the council to kind of see, you know, these are this is what the tree board considered, this is what they recommend. Uh, I think that would be a good approach. I have my own personal opinion. I just want to be careful that as an individual council member, I don't want to overly influence things right now. But I would see that the council would like to see options. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make reasonable sense to you? Because you're probably going to have much influence to anybody else. Yeah. Um, part of you guys are cutting out for some reason with the audio, but I heard most of it. And I think like that finding something that kind of meets in the middle is good um, and it's a good point about like us encouraging diversity and I think we can do if there's more prominent groups too is like instead of calling like oaks out individually or you can say okay a native oak at one size you can just say quercus you know everything quercus um, other like ornamental quercuses or whatever this size you know like are non-natives um, and that can be a way too to address like a few more species under a certain size without having to individually you know have a super long list of things. Um, I know that's Brain Bridge had some like that and others. It's not going to work for anything, everything, but that is just another kind of in the middle way too of grouping things together a bit more that's potentially open. But I think we could again just have a smaller work group to work on this and come up with a good couple options based on the data we have um, to present to council. And I think that would be great. Cool stuff. I guess the one way of putting this question is, say for Western hemlock, which is essentially smaller in this city, we want to protect a certain tree because it's one of the biggest Western hemlocks in the city, even if it's not or near one of the biggest trees in the city. Now, now that would be the question you ultimately ask. Uh, we, in Western hemlock, we want to have enough data to really put it on this, and they kind of in the same which is really not enough to say anything about it. Are you asking me? I'm describing what the question will end up being. That's, that's really what it will be. Do we want to protect this tree because it's the biggest of that species or that group in the case of oaks in the city? Or because it's big. It may be the biggest one, but it's like yeah, it gets to the depth of what do we need by an exceptional tree? Is it a, is it exceptional as a giant tree in general, or is it an exceptional example of species X? Probably accomplishable, but the second option. Um, if I were speaking as an individual council member, I, I'd like the hybrid approach of saying, you know, for the species we have reliable data, let's define like, what is an exceptional those for. And then for other species which we like, but there just aren't enough of them to have statistically meaningful analysis, we can define exceptional and like kind of what Drew just said, that if you have several related species, you could lump them together, you might be able to make that statistically meaningful. And then, if not, just kind of get a catch all. Realistically, the, we've got 90 odd Douglas firs, 40, 40 odd red cedars, 40 odd big leaf maples of a very odd size, size situation. Um, and I think it's more, well, and then there's a few species like northern white cedar, we get lots and lots and lots of little ones that are really, as far as I can go, big ones fall. There's nothing I would want to call an exceptional tree, I'll put it that way. Uh, it, it's not going to work very well to get it. 
for an HBCU, you're saying. Mr. Well, Mr. Chair, because we talk about it just for making make a reasonable statement about it. See here, these these papers very odd. This this is this is virtual. This is on the busy agenda. There are, I think, on the order of 45 big leaf maples in the, in the sample, 43 of them are less than 30 inches. And there are two that are over 40 inches. <laughs> I don't know if I knew what that means, it's but in terms of, it's not, it's not, by it's not exactly, it sounds bimodal. Well, 43 to two, it's kind of like, open. It, it's sort of, in terms of statistical numbers, it's not, it's not a normal distribution. So. This is sort of an area where the council would like to hear from Trina. Or the, or like, it, what is your deal? If option A is as many individual species as possible, and option B is kind of catch all numbers, as you know, a hybrid approach, in your expert opinion as two board members, which of those options do you like? Or for, yeah, providing all of the options and saying, yeah, here are the, the different many, Leverage you can put. This is what we like as a great group. Do we have to data? What? Does there can't be something that we have? Inventory. Yeah. yeah. It's the only data we have yeah. on tree size. Yeah. And yet, the other thing you know, to remember is an exceptional tree in Lake Forest Park may not be exceptional in counting. That was for, you know, I don't think we have a tree in the city that would be considered, not that I would consider exceptional compared to some of the ones that are the, the old forest. So urban trees, uh, urban trees, yeah, you can take limited to that. Certainly nothing to be accepted in the other Yeah. And one more sort of some unrelated item, I think, about what do we what's a grove? And how do we define you know, if there's what would be a grove, but it's spreading over multiple parcels? Does that count as a grove or not? And so it's getting because I think right now the definition of grove is a little bit muddled. In the city code, and so what level of group of tree protections should there be? And something that the council would vote. Yeah, it, it can be cleaned up by that commission. That, that, that discussion predates my time for the last. Yeah, I think we certainly were not intended to grow to be restricted to a single parcel because the grow was an interacting group of trees that together form a neighborhood. More than one species, or yeah, it could be. Yeah, uh, but it's it, 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 it value is in the sum of the trees is greater than the value of individual trees because of all of the associated canopy impacts of wildlife habitat, and, uh, things like that. The globe that provides a similar number of individual scattered trees doesn't so I. I Individually, I like that. So if, if the tree board can kind of come up with, you know, look at what the current definition yeah. is, and if you have any suggestions for me, you know, the more robust definition. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions about kind of like, like the, and I, I immediately can deploy, but any other questions about kind of where the council would like to see it go? No, I think we, we can come up with Few options. Depending on depending on uh, what what few options that would give people sort of an opportunity to express their their feelings about what they're really looking. And the other advice I would offer uh, this predates me on the council, but I'm told that the previous version of the code but drew a lot of public comment when it was adopted. Um, and then it's being revised. So I would say whatever decisions you make, just yeah, be clear. I think you're taking a species off the list. Why are you taking it off the list? And that way, when the public asks, you know, how, why, why do you not care about species X? Do you mean off the list that has designated sizes? Yeah, that? Yes. And so that way you can say, well, no, well, of course we love this particular species. There just aren't enough in the city for us to you know, not choose a number by throwing it to the darts. If that, that's the reason. Look, do this the way I think it's going to have to come out. The catch all number is going to be small, the catch all diameter is going to be smaller than the diameter for the native, the big native choppers. So anything that's left off the list is going to be hit by a fairly low catch all number. Um, so I think 
the fact that it's uh, uh, the tree doesn't have its own diameter may be doing it a favor. Uh, you know, you thought it was a 30 inch or something like that might end up being a potential diameter, but you know, 36 for dark for red cedar. And, and if it's the tree board's recommendation that you know that dig maple is 36 and dark fir is 33 and everything else is 30, right? Then, as long as the tree board has sort of a needed driven explanation for where those numbers came from, that's really what the council wants to understand where these numbers came from. I think the public will want to understand that also. The other question, which is how exceptional is the exception to just not 1%, but not 5%, and, and we'll place a cover. And a similar approach, I'm going to give my same employee response, right. which is give us both. You know, so if you want 1%, yeah. yeah. these are the numbers you would choose. And if you want 5%, those are the numbers you would choose. And then make a recommendation, you know, if you were voting on this, which numbers would you select? But ultimately, it'll, it'll be the council making the decision based on your recommendations. So again, yeah, that same general approach, you know, give us the options and then say which option you as a board prefer. You as a board, not worrying about how like the people are to the city and then want to kick down a bigger one. That's not our but that's not our responsibility. Well, so I would not be named in a lawsuit. I'm pretty right. sure even if the council was yeah. sued, we'd be sued in our official capacities. And so oh, no, they, we'd be because we're making an official day it's not for being discriminatory. Right. But that's what happened the last time somebody wanted to build something that had trees in I, I was at the council meeting, it was all cleared up. But yeah, it was just a question of somebody wanted to do something and the code wouldn't let them. So they raise the issue, and I'm sure they brought in lawyers. One, one does some days. Uh, and I think it just underscores why it's so important that whatever species and numbers are selected, we have a data-driven approach to justify things that, that the phrasing would be arbitrary and capricious that we want to avoid coming across as that. But as long as we have, you've had deliberations, the council's had deliberations, we have a basis by which we chose these species and these numbers. I think that puts us on a pretty solid ground. Do that. Not a lawyer, so do not take any of that as legal advice. Cons consult our city attorney if you have more detailed questions. All right. Moving on to the business of the day. Back to the creek. Can I? <clears throat> Can I ask one question before we move on? It's not about the exceptional trees, but I'm wondering if um, we have any updates either from the city or from the council on the climate policy advisory team. I know um, appointments to it were approved by the council a little over a month ago. And the last email I got was saying, you'll hear from us soon. But I wasn't sure if anybody knows where any of that stands. Oh. Um. I could chime in, uh, Elizabeth or Drew, maybe. I might have more information. Um, the plan, because Mark is very busy shepherding through the comp plan, and then everyone's going to be busy with budget, the idea was to use this $500,000 grant to hire a consultant who would run the show. So I suspect not much is going to happen until we've officially signed a contract and that contract hasn't come before council yet. So I assume the next step is choose a consultant, sign a contract with them, and then the consultant will be the one to actually spool up the task force. So does that, uh, Elizabeth, approve that sound? Like what you've heard? Yeah, we haven't really, I haven't really heard much. So uh, yeah, I haven't gotten an update on that group from Mark. Um, just haven't had a chance, so I can't, I can't say. But we could definitely get some more information about it for Victoria. No, I think that the update from Larry is helpful that I haven't missed anything <laughs> that's come through. Um, I knew they were going to be hiring a consultant to lead it, but wasn't sure. I, I suspect the deadline's going to creep up on us real fast. So wasn't sure how quickly we could be expecting to see that move forward. So I assume I will hear from Mark or someone else when it does. And I know that the council, we have a policy that sufficiently small contracts can just be approved by the administration. 
contracts over a certain threshold have to be officially voted on by council. I am fairly confident this contract will be above that threshold, so the council will be voting. I'm fairly confident council will need to vote on it before it takes effect. What's the threshold? Do you know offhand? Nope. No big deal if you don't. Uh, I want to say either 25 or 50,000. I'm led to believe since this is a 500,000 grant that the, the contract will be above 50,000. I suspect. Great, thanks for that update. All right, McAleer Creed. Yeah. Um, I do have a pending question, Mark, but I think I can get through most of it. Um, so required a little bit of thing to first understand how um, the original grant was received by Julia and then how it was spent. So it turns out that the grant was actually originally received from King County Water Works. So it wasn't through KCP at all. And it was for $45,000. Um, Julia then originally submitted it directly. It was turned down. Then she submitted it to the county council and it was actually approved. So she got $45,000. Um, funds were supposed to be used within three years of forfeited. So there, and to be there, to be all part of their zero dollars left. Um, that was one of the biggest questions. Are there funds left from the Waterworks to be funded project of it? We can still spend on maintenance. And Julia confirmed in a my most re a, a recent email that it was gone, so it was spent. Um, but we found that the city of uh, Lake Forest Park did not utilize the member jurisdiction grant funding since 2009. And in fact, we have $124,000 that they would like to spend. And with who? <laughs> it's with the member jurisdiction so the King Conservation District yeah. is funded by property taxes for every city in King County, except there's a couple that go through themselves for one of them. And part of that money goes into a pot it's called the Member Jurisdiction Grant Fund. And basically, either the city or the nonprofits or other will buy can apply and, and work with the city to take some of this money. And there's a few, I, I don't know if the city has or the park launch to approve it, or it has to be related to certain division, like within the King Conservation District. Um, but the idea is that each city has a fair amount of discretion over their funds. And our funds have basically just been kind of pooling up. Yeah. Because I don't know that there's been many applicants of any. So the city has to sponsor a nonprofit or apply directly. Uh, to spend this money. And so our objective, as I understand it, is to do some maintenance for the original project that Julia has uh, implemented. I wonder if we get John with the conservancy to be that nonprofit. Oh, the Stewardship Foundation? Yeah, sorry, Stewardship Foundation. And I wonder if we opportunity to help him to apply for this fund. And then now you have a nonprofit volunteer group that can help with that maintenance who actually knows what they're doing. Because I think the city is would rather have a nonprofit step up. Yeah, than having like us. this. And do you have a deal for like what? No I know. Like you could be looking for like oh. a higher hundred thousand or no idea. Yeah. No idea. This was just literally came out of my brain as I was learning about all this. Um, so, so the original grant was forty five thousand. I think there was a yeah. little bit of supplemental funding. There was for maintenance, but it was spent. Yeah. So, so you know, that involved all of the original Google Invasive Species and Planning Natives. Um, so, what I think is needed now is just going through uh, finding back a re establishment of native of bases and maybe replacing some of the plants in the dot right. to make sure that the density of native plants is maintained. And so it wouldn't require more than I would think, you know, especially if we got the Stewardship Foundation volunteer effort yeah. gauge more than fifteen thousand dollars yeah. to buy some plants and 
maybe a one person supervising or dealing with other aspects. And I don't know how to go about actually applying for these funds. I can reach out to the woman that I uh, got that information from to find out sort of what the process looks like that. But we'd also have to talk to John and sort of yes. and say, oh, yeah, not just so John. He, he was, he's a good conduit, he, but he has no idea yeah. that I'm the, the conduit with the <laughs> stewardship foundation would need to consider it as a, yeah. a board. Exactly. I suspect the process would be something like the Stewardship Foundation drafts a plan, mm -hmm. reaches out to the city and asks, hey, would you be interested in sponsoring us for this? Exactly. And then if the city gives its blessing, city slash tree board slash council, not sure exactly who, then I believe it would be the Stewardship Foundation that officially then applies and would say, you know, here's our detailed plan, here's our budget, and then it would go to the conservation district board to officially approve it or reject it or ask for provisions. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just gonna, is the stewardship foundation a nonprofit separate from the city? Uh well definitely unrelated to the city okay. and I'm fairly confident they're a nonprofit. I think yeah we have left. The other piece of this is that Mark uh, is working with DCD right now for another Ambassador Creek project. So that's the slope of the creek, yeah. right, for ivy removal and right. stabilization. And it's, yeah. Um, it will not encompass the maintenance of what we're talking right. about. We've already kind of explored that. And the answer is going to be no. But it makes sense to coordinate with them because yes. they're working immediately adjacent to the Exactly. Property. Exactly. Yeah. Are this project we're talking about is that an official city project? That first one, or the, the, the second one you mentioned? This is what I need, Mark, to yeah, let us know this. where that stands. <laughs> Can you ask that committee question for yeah. Mark? Uh, but once we know, I wonder if maintenance waits until that project starts, or I mean, it would take us some time anyway to put an application in. Yeah, one concern is that the, the uh, riparian zone where the work that Julia had got done is right at the foot of the slope, as I understand it, they're going to be working on. Yeah. And so there's going to be impact yep. in that zone. So and, wait. and that might be better to wait and see you know, what the impact is and then. We can mitigate that as exactly. well as uh, doing any other work. Exactly. Yeah. It'll be enough money to do that. Yeah. But in the interim, we can find out what's wrong. Yeah. How steep is the area there? How uh, steep? It's a pretty steep slope. So, uh, very, you know, really steep. And so it's, and, you know, the area that we cleared and planted is the immediate stream side vegetation. And that slope goes right up. And so, you know, any, any work that's being done on that slope above is going to have to be staged from the bottom. And any removal of ivy is going to have to pass through the street bottom. So, yeah, I'm thinking more about how, how much erosion are you going to get if you pull off ivy? That's, you know, that's a good question. I think that their plan is to remove the ivy from the house and stabilize that slope. Well, there's a tree, there's still the tree. Yes. But I mean, it's anything like my, anything like my backyard, but you, you're the expert, so you can, you pull up ivy, you know, it's rough as your, whatever, whatever packing you may have, it, it is a first layer of protection. And you're also a lot of traffic. All the traffic, too, yeah. Foot traffic that work on. And it's not, yeah, for my backyard, that pass goes down, but a steeper hill, probably, will tear it up. And you can only you can plant stuff, you can only grow so fast. That's right. Yeah, I think I'm established. I think I think working on maintenance is a lot of building. You may want to put down some size of that or stay upon for the temporary plants that you plan to establish. I think it makes a lot of sense to sort of hold off on maintaining. More recently, older grant until the new grant's impact has been developed. Yeah, that's not what I'm saying. But I still think we can explore. Yeah, 
with the Stewardship Foundation. And also, I will find out from the uh, Their website does not explicitly say they're a nonprofit, but other Googling suggests that they have IRS people so that they, they are. But that would be worth confirming that. We'll do. I mean, it would be a step. But just making sure they are so they're actually eligible to apply. Uh, there's a chat message. Oh, but Drew is saying don't look at the chat. Oh. <laughs> 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 what is that funny noise? You're muted. Is that Drew? If you were saying something, we couldn't. Oh, yeah. Victoria's just unmuted, so I kept pulling her screen up front because it thought she was talking. So it's just. Well, I don't know. Apologies for that. You couldn't, couldn't hear me sniffling too much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was that was you that we were hearing. Okay, great. Communications and newsletters. You do again. Last week, more victory. Enjoy it. Yeah, so um, I started the spreadsheet that I sent out to um, collect any information about who to contact for various outreach opportunities. Um, so far in there, we have the Lake Forest Park e-news that goes out the second to last Wednesday of each month. The print newsletter... Um, goes out it looks like quarterly and we have deadlines for the next two uh one of them was two weeks ago for the august edition the next deadline if we want something in print is the um fifth of november but those are very short opportunities and um there's not a lot of space in that so there may not be space for something from the tree board uh but it sounds like it would be much easier to get into the e-newsletter if we want something in the monthly one um, social media, I have not been able to connect with Jessica to get more details on kind of how she manages the socials and if there's content that um, would be appropriate for there. We have the Shoreline Area News details, and then um, I was going to uh, fill in Stewardship Foundation newsletter info. John was going to provide some more details on that, but I have not um, gotten those from him yet. So. That is there if other folks have things that come across their radar that they're like, oh yeah, this would be a great channel to promote things through. Um, they can get dropped in there with more details as well. Thank you. And under old business, I took it off the, is there anything more to say on, on that? Thank you for putting that information together, Victoria. Yeah, hopefully it'll be helpful when we have something that we want to promote so that we have an easy list to cross-reference to. Another item on old business, I took it off the agenda, but the, um, the tree list, the work of the tree list is on the uh, We met, had a production meeting talking about things. Uh, Drew has put most of it into the the format of the, of the tree list and Mallory made for Mark and Dick and I look at that and give her comments. I'm kind of hoping we can find some way to distribute it to the rest of the board, you and Victoria, to look at more than a couple of days before the next meeting. I don't know, I don't know how that works. I'm not sure we can leave to do that. Maybe I'll just probably figure out what to do. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to find some way to get the information so you don't have just the time between the agenda and the uh, It's not reasonable, Drew. I see you, you sent out a new email since I was left to my computer. Yeah, I didn't realize for people out of the organization that I had to go in and change those settings to allow um, anyone to edit. So the new one I sent should be editable, but if you also want to send them in a separate one, I can change it on there. I was trying to just eliminate, you know, multiple copies throwing around a bit if we could um, to make sure, you know, so we are all editing, but if for some reason it's not working or, you know, you want to provide any comments the other way. And then once our work group has 
that we've gotten through that first round. Um, I'm happy to send that next copy to the whole tree board if you want on the, the list that I have. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the comments that I've had so far, some of them are really, really very much editing. There's a, there's a uh, couple of our names spelled wrong, which, you know, it's easy. Good yeah. Little, little things that I don't quite understand what you're trying to say, and that's more easy to send you a comment. You know, what do you mean here? Kind of thing. So, but yeah, um, we can certainly do the real editor, the real editing things, and maybe the odd comment here and there. You know, you had a comment about uh, quite high. I want to put in a comment about giant sequoia saying, you know, it gets really big. Please don't plant it in your houses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be great to get more of those like notes comments. And then also, yeah, it's a hard document to spell check since it's so much Latin and cultivars and other words. And so the more eyes we have on it to just see if anything got, you know, typed in correctly or other existing stuff is is great. Okay, so, okay, so we'll do a, okay, we'll do a mixture of editing on the online copy so it works and question to you that you can respond to. You know, that's, anyway, that's an off agenda item, but all right, new business, picnic in the park. We want to have a presentation there. Remind me that when that is, do we know? September 7th. Yeah, I'll September, is that Saturday? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which park is it? Uh, not I think we had talked about being there. I am happy to be there and table. Um, I believe Elizabeth, you sent out the application to us. It's due beginning of next week, end of this week. Is that correct? Uh, yes. And then they did change the times. Um, I think I sent it on the email. It's but later in the day, right? It's like. 2 p.m. something like that to it'd be in the morning but now it's in the okay i am happy to attend and table i would love to have somebody there with me but i'm happy to do it on my own if we want um if folks feel like it would be a, a good place to just get information about the tree board out so if you can go ahead and fill out the application because i'll, I'll try to get there for at least part of the day and i don't know part okay. Pretty good chance Mark will want to do it. He likes to bring that kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, do you want to fill out the application and send it in? And yeah, yeah, the only question I had on the application, um, as I recall, I don't have it in front of me right now, but I believe there was a section about insurance, and I wasn't sure what we have done about that in the past, whether we just leave it blank or um, I know it was a question that came up when we were doing what the permits for the IV event as well. I think you can leave that part blank. Um, okay. Do you think you might be able to be there for part of that, or? Okay. Yeah, I was just looking at my calendar, and potentially it depends. Um, I'm a maybe. I should know in the next couple of weeks. I might have to go back to Wisconsin again for a quick weekend, so I'm trying to figure that out for some family stuff going on. Any of us who have older family know what, you, what you're talking about. Many, many, many unplanned trips. Okay, well, well we, we should be able to get, hopefully you can come. If you can't, we should be able to make it anyway. Okay. Great, I will get the application submitted in the next day or so. Great, thank you. It's true. We have to find some way to get the board members to order through the, through the, through the uh, log jam. Uh -huh. All right, agenda for next meeting. Two things on it. We, we should certainly have the uh, tree list done by then. And Jeff said, and I believe, try to remember to come make a court question. He was out of town. Mark, Mark emailed it and said, I think I missed you. And uh, it's much more polite than I would be able to be. <laughs> Did he just forget that he had a. Yes. But anyway, he said he would definitely be here for the next meeting. He said he couldn't be heard this week, but he could be heard this actually.
question. Well, we should consider the next meeting because it sounds like Stacy and I may both have conflicts for that first Wednesday. I'll be here. I'm just going to be on that Friday. Okay. I will Sorry. be gone that whole week. <laughs> so I won't be here on the fourth Wednesday. I would also point out that's only three weeks from now. So will, will that be enough time to develop the things we talked about today? That's right after Labor Day. It is, it is, yeah, but it's also just before that picnic in the park, in case there's anything that needs to be in our question. And at some point, we do have to get back on track. Yeah. And they were meeting on the first Wednesday. Exactly. Right. Otherwise, it turns out to the second Wednesday. <laughs> and it's always a special meeting. Yeah. Mildly inconvenient. Yeah. More, more than mildly funny for you. Oh, but if two people ever, so who said they can't do the fourth? I can't do and August only had three set three one two other four. Oh, just focus four. I, I would also point out if two of you can't do the four, then the meeting is canceled anyway for lack of quorum. Yeah. Victoria, are you gonna be around on the fourth? Yeah, I can do the fourth or the eleventh. I can do actually I can do any Wednesday in September. So it doesn't I don't have a strong preference. We'll be back for the month. So I guess we need to go to Mark and available on the floor. Um, maybe Elizabeth could send out sort of the general survey who's available on the floor. And if not, then they let them get back to option. I, I have no objection to either one as far as I know. Check the level we can. Perhaps recycle and compost on the floor. That interferes with this. <laughs> Um, one question I would love to have an answer to before picnic in the park, whether that's either a meet at a meeting on the fourth or if, um, we can get an update from Mark is if we should be still advertising for recruiting for more board members at picnic in the park, or if we have folks who are still sitting in the queue and we should not be asking more people to apply. Very, you, you told us we could have. You can, have up four members. you can have up to two alternates. So I think there's no reason not to continue asking for interest. Okay, sounds great. If I wasn't sure if people are sitting for months just kind of waiting for an answer, if it was just a good idea to get the word out if folks are not going to have a great experience um, or get a response if they apply. So. Yeah, I don't really understand it. But I got a or did they anywhere near this long? I don't know. No. But that's why I guess Mark is only know what's going on. And he's not here. Yeah, but Mark. I could also reach out to Mayor Tom French and see if he has a feel for, for where things are in the process. It's to come before council too, is there any Yeah, yeah. So it is people apply, Tom will interview them. And then send their names to the council to officially vote. Challenge the president, like President Biden, nominate someone, and then the Senate votes on them. Kind of like that. Not quite like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it's that style that the executive mayor officially nominates people, and then the council is the one who officially votes yes or no. You all remember that we really heavily at the council. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> okay, yeah, if you would do that, Larry, it'd be nice to see. When was the idea out? That's when we first started. It. Yeah, yeah, that was when we attracted it. I can't remember her name. Not that it was then, it says she wanted to be in it. There's another ranch in Clyde as well, right? Yeah, I think we had two, yeah. It has been hanging fire for a long time. Um, but the last update was that it was me there. And Mark the president to remind him, so it might be better. I can send out a reply. Yeah, check in. Check in. We're actually we're two members short of member not in there for him. I guess here. Wait, just for sure. Pretty just for sure. We have two empty yeah spaces. So I mean, we 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 are in a situation where one of us is gone. We go for him. Two of us are gone. All right. Uh, anything else you want to talk about? 
Well, here I move to adjourn. That's so moved. All in favor? Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Mary, I should tell you, we talked about this this morning. Have you ever, have you ever had time to a graduation at UW? Yes. You know that they had this seat. All right, Mary, thank you. I will, we'll get in touch with you about the tree list. Okay, so, yeah, sounds good. And nice to see everybody. Drew, okay. I have an unrelated quick question. Sure. Um, on, I live right on Ballinger, and somebody appears to have hit one of the trees outside my house a couple of weeks ago. Is that something the city either already knows about or that should be reported in some way? I don't think I know about that one that got hit on Ballinger. I've been dealing with a couple other ones. Um, I'm happy to go take a look at it. I work with Public Works to kind of handle those in the right of way. So if you just want to email me where it is. And it's right it next to the it. local 104. It's next to the driveway for the local 104. And they took a good chunk out of the side of it. It's a big tree. <laughs> uh, all right. Send it over and I'll look at it. <laughs> okay. Thanks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anyone else? <laughs> Anyone else have a tree question before we go? Pensioner. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out. I'll see you guys at the next one. Yeah.